to the chaos, I've enlisted the help of the Italian Stallion Paul. So today we are going to be tackling my brand new 2008, new to me, 2008 Dodge Viper. And there's really not too much information, unfortunately, out there about these cars. So we're kind of guinea pigs and we're trying to learn as we go, but we've already run into the first snag, trying to just figure out how to get this car up in the air and start to work on it. But the goal, so unfortunately it does have an oil leak. So these cars apparently are known for the oil cooler lines to leak. So we're going to be replacing those, but in order to even get to that point, we gotta drain the oil, get all that old oil out, and then probably have to take the oil pan off. So we got a brand new gasket and work on getting the oil pan taken off, put back on, but then new lines for it as well. So we got quite the undertaking, but first things first, we're going to do a cold start, just to warm that oil up, and then try to jack it up, get it in the air. So the next step, now that we got the car safely up, we're going to basically act like we're doing oil change, drain the old oil out, and then the fun begins. That's where we get to pull the cooler lines off and crawl up under the car and get the oil pan off. So we're gonna take the oil pan off because that's where a majority of the leak is both from those cooler lines, but then the pan itself. I mean, the whole underside of the car is just coated in oil, unfortunately. And so now we've got it laid out. What we're gonna try to do, because there's just so many bolts to that oil pan, I don't wanna forget where they go. So we're gonna have like a piece of poster board that we're gonna use as like our diagram map. So as we pull the bolts out, we'll kind of place them <laughs> where they need to go back in. So that way hopefully makes this job a lot easier when we're doing the reverse of putting the pan back on. We're back in art school. Here's our beautiful diagram. So we're gonna try to pull these bolts out and transfer them to our little mock-up here. So that way as we're doing the reverse and doing the install, it'll make life so much easier. So we'll see how this goes. Paul and I done good. This is the first ever oil pan we've ever pulled off a car and oddly enough, the craziest car we've ever worked on as well. But there's actually, aside from all the diagram bolts, well these are like our, there was a like accessory line holding the, I think these are AC lines at the front. Um, all of our oil pan bolts, that was like a transmission brace are these two at the back, but bolts they don't account for our actually transmission they kind of mount sideways yeah so there's because we couldn't get it down at first but there's these two on each side where it just mounts to the transmission so that was holding it up same 13 millimeters that were holding the pan up the same size for those as well yep so aside from your your two accessory bolts, those are 10 millimeters. Everything else is 13. So at least that part's nice and easy. Now that we have the pan out, we have to clean. We'll be able to just ditch. I got a brand new gasket, so we'll be able to ditch this old one. But then we're going to want to clean up any caked on gasket or RTV sealant. Paul was saying like looking at the underside of the motor at this point, everything looks really good to be in good shape and stuff. So that makes that makes me feel good because you just never know the life of the of the car itself. Here's a sight I never thought I'd see, but it's the bottom of a V10 motor. But everything looks to be in good shape. Now that the oil pan is off, 
Our next task is to get these oil cooler lines off since they're leaking. There's two of them. I know you can only see one right here is the oil cooler line. I know you can only see one in the in the frame, but they both act the same. So like there's this little plastic sleeve. Those just slide back. You can do those with your fingers. So I'm gonna do that for both. Well, I say you can do it with your fingers. The first one was easy. Second one, it's gonna fight me. So I slid the black plastic caps back and then there's a retaining clip in here that hopefully I can get out with a flathead screwdriver. Yep, <laughs> I heard it hit the ground, so that's at least a decent sound. It went all the way through. That retainer clip looks just like that. There's two of them, but since you can't see the other one on camera, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I was able to pop the front one off, but there's two on top and then two underneath the car. The next step is gonna be to take your giant one and a quarter wrench and we're gonna actually turn these old fittings off. We've got all the old oil cooler lines off and having the right tools makes a huge difference. So I was able to break it free originally with like the open end box wrench, but then had to finish it off, run to the auto parts store and grab a socket. That just made things way easier. But all the old stuff at this point is off. So now it's time to reassemble with some new stuff. We have our shiny new pieces, the oil lines from Viper, Viper Specialty. And these are the Pro Plus Quick Disconnect lines. So this purple, that's the Quick Disconnect. Paul's gonna demonstrate how it actually comes apart because it took a minute to figure out. But he's gonna take just that little plastic tab, he's gonna peel that back. And you gotta simultaneously kind of push the little ball pin and there's two little springs and then it separates. But then we gotta quick disconnect that way. So we should just be able to put those bungs into the four ports on the oil cooler and then the block. And it should make install a whole lot easier. So the Viper specialty bungs are one inch, but they should just go in the stock holes where we pulled the, the big boys out of. All right, so we went ahead and got the, uh, the in fitting screwed in. They're not torqued down or anything just because we don't want to over torque it. There's seals on the end of them, so we don't want to break those, but they're at least to the point where they are uh, hand tight. So now at this point, we just got to go ahead and take the hoses, route them, and do the quick connects with the clamps, and we should be good to go on this part of the project. So Paul's going to hook up. We're going to do the longer hose is the one closest to the front of the car, and you want to do the 90 degree bend from the top one. We're back at it again. It's the next day, so this could probably be done in one full day, but we got a late start and just kind of ran out of daylight and just kind of got burnt out. So with this, I want to make sure we're primed ready to go so that way we're not making any mistakes but I apologize for like the lack of video from underneath the car but it's just it was impossible to get an angle on those fittings so I'm gonna show you because it's the exact same process so I can show you easier on the top side but it's the exact same process underneath for those oil lines where they hook into the block so now with the purple couplers on there you can tell where our oil lines are but all you have to do, because I got the quick disconnect kit, just because I figured that would make things easier instead of, because you are working in tight spaces. So I figured it would make it easier just to install everything, and it does. But up top, with the Viper Specialty Kit, you're going to want to use the 90 degree elbows on the top, and then the 45s where it connects to the block. But you put the little bung on there, and then 
slide the hoses in and put those clamps on and you're good to go. But it's the same process on the bottom. And as I was saying, I apologize, I can't, I wasn't able to get footage of us doing the bottom, but it's just such a tight space. I mean, you can barely see it now. If it wasn't for those purple couplers, you'd have no idea where we were working. But it's the same process as on top. Take that stock, big fitting off, disconnect your hoses, and then pop your new stuff on. So before we actually throw the oil pan back on, we got the new gasket, but then just for added safety measure and so hopefully it doesn't leak, we've grabbed some of the black Permatex, like the gasket maker. So we're gonna throw that on the corners, front and back, where it's more prone to leak. So we're gonna do that first and then slap our gasket on and then crawl up and it's go time, get it on the car. Yeah, today uh, getting the oil pan back up it was a little bit of a struggle at first trying to get it aligned with everything uh, making sure that the gasket was where it needed to be and the holes lined up in the block and of course because it's got to be more difficult than it needs to be you've got your different length bolts and then you've got a particular sequence that you have to torque everything down in so you've got bolt number one with our handy little poster board that we made <laughs> to kind of keep track of the order. So, you know, bolt one goes over here, two over here, three, four, five, and then it just goes in a crazy order. So uh, we just had to make sure that the 19 bolts that we put in, we put in not only in the correct sequence, but torque them down in that sequence as well. Uh, so took a little bit longer than you would think it would need to take, but um, hopefully everything worked out well with that. And the people that claim this is a one-man job, I have no idea how because that the oil pan itself is just so cumbersome and heavy that it's, I don't know how you would hold it up and be able to get it aligned with the gasket staying in place. It's just, I don't see it happening, but I definitely recommend recruiting some help. So we got our expert. <laughs> and I'm skipping arm day tomorrow. <laughs> So you would definitely get your workout because even cranking them down and stuff it's just on your back is it's not easy good old story time so we are complete but it's never without a little bit of chaos so what ended up happening we got all of the 13 millimeters tightened down like basically like the entire oil pan minus the part that kind of sits next to the flywheel mm -hmm. like where the those are tens 10 millimeter and so the because they are tens they have a different torque spec <laughs> So we were torquing all the 13s down to 21 foot-pounds. Yep. Well, the 10s are only supposed to be... About eight foot-pounds. So we really went to cranking on them and we ended up kind of stripping out because the, the block is aluminum. We found that out, I mean, kind of knew ahead of time just to be careful, but I think we got so excited to get done with the project that we had four bolts, those four bolts, and that was it. And we got to that point, didn't change our torque setting, so we kind of ate up a little bit of the aluminum so then we were kind of scrambling <laughs> but ran to the hardware store we're able to get longer same size same bolts. thread same dimensions and everything except for the length was probably about close to a quarter inch longer i'd say and that was just enough to where they're in there we threw some red thread locker on there hoping that won't give us any issues so we'll find out we're gonna let the RTV sealant, it says it takes 24 hours for that to set up. So we're gonna let the car sit here for 24 hours. And then also that thread locker that you normally shouldn't have to use, and you shouldn't have to use longer bolts either. But this is the first time doing it, so <laughs> we're learning. But take it, yeah, learn from our mistake and just make sure you're paying attention to those torque specs. But everything at this point is back together. 
Like I said, now it's just a waiting game. Um, we did go ahead and throw the uh, oil filter back on, like filled it full of oil as much as we could, tighten that back down. So tomorrow it'll just be throwing some oil in it and praying that <laughs> we have no oil leaks. Uh. We're back. This is now day three. We've let all of the, that RTV, that gasket maker, let all of that kind of set up overnight. And now's the pretty much moment of truth. We're gonna pour some oil in there. We're not gonna start the car initially, just because we want to, just see if we have any indication once that oil goes in there. If it, you know, liquid is gonna, if it wants to come out, it's gonna find a way. So before we pressurize the system, we're just gonna dump the oil in there, hop up underneath the car, see what we see, hopefully nothing. Then we'll actually give it a start. Yeah, cross those fingers. <laughs> So far so good, popped under there. We've got fluid in and checked all the bolt hole locations around the perimeter of the pan. Uh, the fittings around the oil filter, can't see any oil trying to creep its way out. But the real test at this point is gonna be cranking the motor, getting some pressure built up, and hopefully everything stays inside the motor and in the pan. Paul's gonna hop into the car, I'm gonna climb underneath, and I'm not sure because it does have the push button, but we're gonna try to not like fully turn the motor over yet. We're hoping we can put it like accessory mode, you know, prime the fuel pump and just kind of click that button just to kind of get the motor to turn over a couple times before we actually fully start it. But that's Paul's job. I'm gonna crawl into the car. Just looking at like the oil fitting lines up here at the top. Don't see any leaks there. Um, we put some poster board, some like nice white clean poster board down. And so there's no apparent drips or anything like that at this point. So we're gonna let it just cool off for a few. That way we can probably run our finger around it, but so far so good. Good news, <laughs> no leaks. So Paul's under there right now, buttoned up. There's like that little kind of transmission brace. I don't really know what it is, but it basically covers the flywheel. So we're gonna put that on, lower the car, start it up again, check our oil levels, all that kind of good stuff, but didn't see no visual leaks. Kind of took a paper towel, wiped all the way around the perimeter of the pan, looked at the oil cooler lines. Appears that we have fixed it. So crisis averted <laughs> for now. So we'll kind of, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, but be able to set the car down and check our oil levels and hopefully that should be it. Definitely, I feel like we can call this a success. We're gonna keep an eye on it just over the course of the next couple weeks and all after I've been driven a little bit, but so far so good. So one of the biggest things, like the biggest takeaways from this that I think we both learned is anything because it's aluminum, just be very mindful of torquing stuff down and just not over tightening anything. So, but don't be scared to do it yourself. I mean, like we're both new, this is the first V10, whether you want to call it a supercar or not, I don't know, but this is definitely the highest caliber of car we've ever worked on. Mm -hmm. And it is a little intimidating just because you don't want to mess anything up. But I mean, at the end of the day, I guess it is a car, so. <laughs> but yeah, oh, scale of one to 10, easiness factor. I'd probably put it somewhere around like uh, seven or eight, just because of the physicality of not having a lift and having to contort yeah. on there to <laughs> get to everything. But yeah, know. it's definitely not a job People, if they claim they can do it themselves, good on them. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I just don't see it possible without a buddy. Right. <laughs> Basically, Paul Paul's the MVP of this <laughs> whole install, but seriously, I can't think of enough. But I appreciate everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. We'll do our best to answer them. Just we're also new to this, but we'll do our best to answer them correctly. So I appreciate everybody watching. If you will, subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you in the next one.